All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's Walk and Talk. We are on the beautiful Isle of Man as usual. We've got some crazy stuff to talk about that are, for me to share with you today. But we're going to walk away from the house here because the peacocks are, <laughs> are just too noisy. <laughs> I started the walk and talk back there and the peacocks are all coming over, making tons of noise. So we'll take a walk down here. Now, if you look behind me before we get into the, the doom and gloom, as it were, I want you to see the daffodils. The daffodils are out, but it is still March. So let's give it another couple of weeks, see if we can get a better bloom of daffodils. So the first story then, the UK, I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Just unbelievable what's happening in the UK. This is the biggest rise in poverty levels in over three decades. It's up to 18%. Now, this is poverty. This is not people who are poor or struggling. This is poverty by government statistics as well, not by, you know, any statistics that I've, I've created or given to you here. But yeah, they said as well that if the, the government didn't give these payments of £3,800 per household of people who are having difficulty, the number would be even higher. It would be over 20%. And another statistic that's just come out is that children in the UK, it's now 25% of children who are living in poverty, according to government statistics. And it says that some of them, I mean, we won't go through all, all the stuff, but some of the main things it said haven't got enough food, children just haven't got enough food, and this slows down their education, things like that. Now, another point I'd make on this is, it's not just the fact that they haven't got enough food, that's making kids not learn as well now. You've got to think of all the lockdowns and the impact that had. And also I had to tell my friends who were sending their kids to school on these, um, they're like these sugary cereal, just a bowl of sugary cereal with some semi-skimmed <laughs> semi skimmed milk. I was like, no, hey, no, give them some eggs, give them some you know, meat or something, give them something quite protein heavy in the morning. Don't give them this sugary nothing. It was just nothing. It was just air really. And some semi skim milk because they're going to be hungry. They're going to have a sugar crash after no time at all. But of course we talked about the Kellogg's CEO the other week, didn't we? And he said the solution to hunger is for people to eat cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So have some cereal for your dinner as well. Has all the nutrients you need. Really, really, have you looked at these cereal? <laughs> they haven't got the nutrients you need. Trust me on this one. But what does the government say the reason is for all of these poverty levels? You know what's coming. Here we go. Due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, millions more people fell into absolute poverty. BS, everything that the government does wrong, they are blaming on someone else. And the whole Russia-Ukraine a conflict seems to get the blame for pretty much everything before it was COVID. You know, COVID was the reason that the money printers went crazy and it led to rampant inflation and the uh, supply chain breakdowns. Nothing to do with lockdowns where people couldn't work and all the other things. No, no, no. It was, um, it was COVID that did all that. Now they need another excuse to keep everything going. So this time it's Russia, Ukraine that gets the blame for every government decision that's leading to all these problems. We also have the statistics then on food insecurity in the UK. And this has risen just in the last year from 8% all the way up to 11%. And the proportion of people unable to heat their home more than doubled from 4% to 11%. So actually that's almost triple, it's not double. So 4% to 11% now of people in the UK cannot afford to heat their home during winter. Another crazy statistic then, and we've seen some images of this already, the number of people using food banks in the UK increased by 60% just in one single month alone. And the number's up so much that it's even hard to track now because the usage is just so high. And I was just reading another article on food and, you know, all these, <laughs> you know, there are always these sort of propaganda media 
paid for type articles and things like that. But this one was an interesting one. And they had all these scientists, of course. They said hotter temperatures have led to higher food costs. Then they've quoted this guy, Gernot Wagner, a climate economist. I didn't even know that was a, a job title, but there we go. At Columbia University's business school, who wasn't part of the research. I mean, as soon as they put that in, everyone should just sort of switch off there and then. So he wasn't part of the research said what he calls climate inflation is all too real and the numbers are rather striking. But here's where it gets really, really stupid, <laughs> right? And this is where the, you know, even the average person would go, okay, this is, this is dumb. This, these people don't know what they're talking about. They're trying to fool me here. This is where they say, as global temperatures rise, we need to do more to reduce the impact of the sun's heating rays. This will lower crop yields and increase failed harvests. Sorry, did I just hear that right? So more sun on crops will lower the yield of the harvest. I mean, I, look, I'm no climate economist, but, <laughs> but wow, we got some bright sun right in front of me actually. But I would have thought more sun would increase the yield, not decrease the yield. But hey, I mean, I guess I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to this, because this, this expert is saying that this is going to decrease the crop yields. How I, I, it doesn't say, of course, they never, they never say. And another thing they never say is that the budget is going to increase taxes for everyone. So we've got the new Biden budget, as they are calling it here. This is the 2025 budget. And it looks as though, if the calculations here are correct, it's going to increase taxes by seven trillion US dollars. Seven trillion dollars. And of course, all the, there's a lot of reasons for this. And they cite, you know, all the, the borrowing they've had to do to help Ukraine and Israel and weapons and COVID and da, 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 and you name it. And they're, they're basically, you know, it's basically in there. So who's going to be affected then? It's small businesses, families, and also implementing a global tax on US citizens around the world. So basically that already exists, but they're basically going to tighten this a lot more. There's also going to be new inheritance tax measures or death tax, but this is predominantly going to be on family owned farms and businesses and of course they get into all the climate stuff and this is the reason why it's the small farmers that are causing all the climate issues it's not the big farmers so they're just penalizing yet again the small farmers they're penalizing small businesses as well because the big businesses aren't going to pay all these extra taxes the big businesses are just offshore like they always do well i know you can't you know we don't have smelly vision here but if you could smell right now this is super strong here because there's so much wild garlic everywhere. This stuff here is wild garlic and it's really, really pungent at the moment. Now, the other thing that's been announced in this budget is increased spending or funding for the IRS. So over a hundred billion, they want to increase the powers of the IRS. They're going to be bringing in new technology and AI. They're going to be looking back as well over tax returns. Uh, I mean, this is going to get scary in the future. Any of you who have been doing dodgy stuff over the last few years, you know, be careful because when all this AI starts getting into the bank accounts and, and this is why they didn't want to have the warrants for the bank accounts that we talked about the other day, by the way, because they want to give access to AI and these new, I think they're called now, I can't remember the name. It's a new type of computer that the AI is going to be using in conjunction with the IRS and I mean, it's just wild. It's so crazy, all this new stuff. Another wild thing then is the Trump issue at the moment with the seizure of assets because he wasn't able to get any companies to put up the bond for him. <laughs> and I was watching some of the commentary on this and it's so uh, funny to watch these news reporters getting really excited, especially the really left-wing ones. They're getting so excited over Trump Tower being uh, confiscated or seized and all these liens that are going to be put on his stuff and everything else. They're getting so excited by all this, but I just don't think it is going to happen. I really don't. But then again, I didn't think that he would get that 
big of a fine in the first place, but that happened. So, <laughs> oh gosh. Hey, to live in the US. Another big story then that has been coming out over the last two days is about China. And the interesting thing is, China hasn't really made any statements. They haven't changed their stance on Taiwan. Uh, Xi Jinping hasn't really said anything new from what we covered before, where he said reunification is inevitable eventually. Wow, look at this beautiful waterfall here. It's always funny when I'm doing these videos because what you don't see is what just <laughs> happened for the last 10 minutes here. So a massive stampede of kids just came through. So uh, yeah, it's actually 10 minutes since that last little cut there where I'm showing the kids my cameras and showing them how I make you know videos and stuff like that. But anyway, getting back, where, I don't even know where we were. I think we were talking about China. So, <laughs> uh, so what's the latest then? Nothing from China, but there's so much rhetoric coming out from US. And there was half a dozen media um, that came out on this. It was all the same story. So it's obviously that someone's created this story to put it out. It's basically the same story across different platforms. Admiral John Aquilino of the Indo-Pacific Command warned that the PLA will be ready to invade Taiwan by 2027. He said China's added 400 fighter aircraft and 20 major warships they've increased their military spending by 16 percent to over 223 billion dollars so now we've got all this coming out about the us needs to increase its spending start doing more towards the war effort that may come in 2027 and which is interesting what did i say in 2020 and 2021 what is the year that I think we're most likely to see a lot of conflict? It's 2027. <laughs> so that's getting scary now that I said that, gosh, three to four years ago and we're starting to see all these things. It's really scary. Another thing that's really scary is what the strategists, these are US strategists, are saying. The best line of defense for Taiwan is to allow enough time for the US military to arrive in full force and destroy the Chinese military using advanced tech tactics and superior weaponry. <laughs> Does anyone actually believe that? I'm, uh, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, I think we're gonna do the last part of today's video up behind me there, up on the cliff. Let's go up there, it looks nice. Okay, we are walking across the top part now and we're gonna see some beautiful views in a second here. But I want to do the crazy stuff now, the controversial, crazy kind of couple of articles. And then I want to go into, well, I want to end with a different article, a positive article. Let's end on a happy note for a change. Let's keep people happy that don't like the, uh, the negative endings. So here, here's, here's a weird one. The New York Times just put out the story saying the deep state is actually a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's legit article. They said the people that work in this space are everyday hardworking citizens like us, contributing significantly to society by dedicating their lives to service. They also went on to talk about some things that are very, very unusual, talking about the re-election of Trump and how it's in certain people's best interests that this doesn't happen and how they're working behind the scenes and all this sort of <laughs> this sort of stuff. I mean, it's amazing that this sort of media exists for one party and it's pro, but you can't put it out on other parties. Wow, look at the color of the sea here. Isn't that beautiful? You can swim here, it's beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. It's a little bit cold though at the moment. I did go in, I think it was last, no, two Sundays ago and it was pretty cold, I've got to say, but it definitely woke me up, that's, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> I tell you, I've gotten into my exercise a lot more over the last few months. After the army for 10 years, I mean, I was training once, twice a day, most days, six, seven days a week, and then afterwards, haven't trained as hard or as much, but I'm getting into my exercise a lot more now, don't want to do more than four days a week though. That's a little bit overkill for me. But oh, here we are. Here we are. We're at the top. And these paths go on forever, by the way. 
I mean, you could be walking for days, days straight around all these coastal paths. Some people do actually, some people do walk around for days straight and they just camp out as they go along. Okay, last crazy article then, then we'll get into something more positive. Scottish hate crime madness. Scotland's new hate crime laws, I said this was coming, effective next month, are training police to target actors and comedians for content deemed threatening and abusive. You've got to read the list of all these things. It's misgendering people or saying something that might be against a minority. You know, all the things that, you know, were fair game for comedians in the past. Now it's coming under this new hate law. So I think the days of comedy clubs and things like that are, I guess that they're, they're either going to change very dramatically or they will end. Maybe the uh, comedians will have to change their material quite heavily in order to meet all this new criteria then. But let's get on to the, the happy ending of today's video. Happiest countries in the world survey 2024. <coughs> P.S. <laughs> the number one country is uh, Finland, which may be true. I know some Finnish people, they tend to be very happy. We're just going through this list, a lot of these European countries. I don't know how they can be the happiest countries. Sweden is on there, right? Number four, Sweden. You ask the average person in Sweden how happy they are, if they are the happiest in the world. Number four in the world with everything going on in Sweden at the moment. I'd be very very surprised. Maybe it's the people who live more uh, outside the cities, perhaps. Yeah, I'm sure they are extremely happy, most of these Nordic countries. But I don't think the, the cities, <laughs> if you ask the people, they would say they are the happiest. Israel is number five on the list as well. Netherlands, number six. Norway, number seven. Luxembourg at eight. Switzerland, nine. Australia, number 10. Even the UK is on here, number 20. How? How? How number 20, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think this is absolute nonsense as I've been looking through these charts of who the happiest are. The US is way down on the list, by the way. The US is not even, you know, in the top 20 for happiest. Of course, Russia has to be on there with uh, Ukraine, the lowest in Europe. Appar apparently, Russian citizens are unhappy and you read into all the data because of Putin. And, the, and everything, they're all unhappy. They, they're just not happy about this at all. But what really made me laugh about this survey was East and Central Asia. They've got Australia up there as the clear winner. But then you've got other countries of which I've been to most of these Southeast Asian countries. People are smiling all the time. They're so happy. They're just happy all the time, smiling. But yet they're nowhere near happy. No, no, these are really sad. They've got them, you know, sad faces. People in these countries are sad because they don't have a, you know, a Western lifestyle and whatever else. It's just nonsense. Who makes up these surveys? I can't believe the Isle of Man wasn't on there. This is just one of the happiest places. Look at this. Look at that sea. It's crystal clear. It's green. It's like an emerald color there. It only gets darker as you go further out, but you don't want to be swimming out there anyway, by the way, just because of the, the tides. Look at this. There's no one here. Look at these beautiful footpaths and the scenery. There's just lovely animals. I've got my animals at the house. I've got my chickens coming in the next few days. My new chickens. I got my peacock, Winston, who just sits outside the window all day. He just sits there, companion. Show us your dance. That's right, wiggle that, wiggle that tail. Wiggle those tail feathers. There you go, there you go. Everyone's watching, they wanna see. Come on, show us your best. There's no politics, there's no left or right here. I, I don't know why people from the UK don't just move here, and honestly. You know, the, the good people, please. We, we don't want the bad, we don't want the bad ones coming over, but <laughs> you know, the good people. I, I just, I don't get it. Why pay triple the taxes and uh, have nowhere near good as quality as life? I don't know, but hey, each to their own. You do you. I mean, I guess we all do, do what we want in this life. All right, well, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed today's walk and talk and the beautiful scenery. And uh, that's a nice wrap up to the week. Take care, God bless you, God bless your families, and I'm gonna enjoy a beautiful walk now.
Bye for now.